Hello friends, welcome back. In this small video, we will discuss how to approach MCQs on inheritance pattern. Such MCQs are common in your PG exams as well as super specialty entrance exams and OBS and genetics. So here in this question, they've given you a disease, they've given you how the parents are affected and then they've asked you inheritance in the next generation. Now to answer such questions, the first rule is to remember what kind of a disease inheritance, uh, what kind of the, a disease it is, what is the inheritance pattern of the disease, whether it is autosomal dominant, recessive, or X-linked dominant or recessive. Y-linked diseases are uncommon for such inheritance pattern questions because the inheritance is so simple. It is just carried from y, uh, in the Y chromosome from father to the son. So we will see uh, how to derive the inheritance pattern if you know the uh, inheritance of the disease. Uh, if you remember the whole table, but there are situations when you don't remember, uh, you, have heard, you haven't heard the name of the disease or you're like me. And despite memorizing it many times, you don't remember, you can't recollect in the exam. You're so nervous that you just can't remember uh, that what is the inheritance pattern of this disease. So if you don't remember, don't get nervous. There are still a lot of tips and tricks which will help you decide uh, that what is the whether the disease is autosomal dominant or recessive or it is uh, X-linked dominant or recessive. Depend, seeing the looking at the question, you will be able to uh, decide this, and then you obviously know the formula with the help of which you can answer the inheritance pattern in the next question. So we will see that formula. We will see the three into three box, which you have to draw in your exam to find the answer. And then I'll give you tips of how to decide what is the inheritance pattern of this disease, dominant or recessive, X-linked or not X-linked. Uh, right, so let's go ahead with the discussion. So you need to know certain basic principles of, or, of all of these kinds of inheritance patterns, autosomal dominant, recessive, uh, X-linked dominant and recessive. Autosomal dominant for an autosomal dominant condition, the individual will be affected if one gene is mutated only there are for each gene there are two alleles if one mutated allele is present all the individuals with that mutated allele will have the disease there won't be a carrier state in this disease anyone with the mutation mutation will be affected and if the mutation is not passed down the generation like if two affected parents are there and the child is not affected because it has inherited both normal alleles from both the parents then the disease simply exits their family, the, it exits the pedigree, it will not recur again. There won't be any skip generations in autosomal dominant conditions. Whereas in autosomal recessive condition, both the alleles have to be mutated for the person to be affected. So if the genotype is A, A dashed, where A dashed represents the mutated allele, then the person is called a carrier. Uh, this person will not have the disease. This person has only inherited a mutated allele from one of its parents, but doesn't have the disease because both the alleles are not mutated. It also inherited a normal allele from the other parent. Whereas if a person inherits both the mutated alleles from both of its parents, then the person is going to be affected. So since there is a carrier state in recessive conditions, there can be skip generations. Like there are two parents who are affected or one parent is affected and only one mutation was carried down to the generation to the next generation. This person is phenotypically normal, but is a carrier. Then this person, if gets married to another carrier, can pass down the mutation to the next generation and the next generation offspring, one of them can be affected. So there can be skip generations in autosomal recessive conditions. X-linked dominant conditions. X-linked dominant, whether it is male or female, if the mutation is present, the individual will be affected. X-linked recessive, male will be affected if, the, if any kind of X-linked mutation is present, whether dominant or recessive. But for a female to be affected with X-linked recessive disease, both the X chromosomes should have the uh, mutated allele. So X dash X, uh, X for X dash X for recessive disease is a carrier in females and affected in male because males have only one X chromosome. And for the female to be affected, both the X chromosomes should have the mutated allele. Right, for Y linked, again, I'm not explaining here because it's very simple and you don't get many questions. I'll give you a table, I think, in the end of inheritance of Y linked diseases. Now let's see the inheritance patterns, how to derive with the three into three box. So initial part, I'll tell you how to derive if you know what kind of disease it is. The last two minutes I'll discuss if you don't know, if you have forgotten, then how to uh, 
decide what kind of disease it is whatever uh, your way of remembering whether you remember or whether you don't remember these boxes are very important you have to draw these boxes there are various inheritance patterns there are various ways in which parents can be affected so uh, it's not important for you to memorize you can't memorize that if it is an autosomal dominant condition if one parent is affected uh, there is a 50% chance in the offspring or 25% or you can't memorize you just have to make these tables in the exam so you have to remember what is the basic principle of making these tables so don't read this line as yet. Get, let's get to this three into three box. So here you have an affected parent. Affected, I say, because it is an autosomal dominant condition. If one mutated allele is present, the parent is going to be affected. So this is an affected parent. That's a normal allele. This is an abnormal allele, the mutated allele. And the unaffected parent has both normal alleles, unmutated alleles. So here you see this box is unaffected. This box is unaffected. Here these two boxes are affected. So this means that each offspring has a 50% chance of inheriting the disease, which means that when uh, such a, an affected uh, individual gets married to an unaffected individual, then with each conception, there's a 50% chance that the child will be affected. Now, a trick question in such cases or in any kind of inheritance cases is, uh, it is not right to put it the other way around. Like I am saying each offspring has a 50% of chance of being affected. This doesn't mean that uh, of all the children, 50% will be affected and 50% will not be affected. That's not right to say because it's like flipping a coin. You have four coins and you are flipping. You can't say that two coins will show you heads and two coins will show you tails. All the four coins can show heads, all the four coins can show heads, it can, uh, tails or it can be 50, 50, 75, 25, whatever way. It's very random. It's probability. You just can say with certainty that each flip there's a 50% chance that it'll be head or it'll be tail. This is what it means when I say 50% chance of inheriting a mutation. I'll give you an example. Like in one of the neat PG exams, there was a question. Father has Marfan syndrome. Mother doesn't have Marfan syndrome. First child is not affected. What is the chance that the other second child uh, is going to get affected? So people thought they drew this box and they said that the un unaffected child has got born. And now they have three more chances out of which two will be affected. So they wrote the risk is two third, which is around 66% and not 50%. So that's not correct. Uh, even if you have four normal children, the fifth child can still be normal because each child only has a 50% chance of being affected. So that's how we put it. Uh, if they give you a question where they tell you ab about the first offspring, it doesn't affect uh, the inheritance of the next child. These are just two siblings the probability of disease in one sibling is not going to affect the probability of disease in the second uh, sibling, right? So just remember that each child has 50% chance of inheriting the mutation. And it's not affected by the fact whether the previous child was affected, was a carrier or whatever. Right, that holds true for all kinds of inheritances. So your inheritance will depend on what the parents' genotypes are and not what its brothers or sisters' genotypes are because each child has the same risk. Now here, affected parent, unaffected parent, 50% of the offsprings will be affected. It's not right to say it that way. Uh, each offspring has a 50% chance of being affected. I have written 50% affected offsprings here because that's a shorter way to put it. But what is correct is each child has a 50% chance of inheriting the mutated gene and being affected. Now, autosomal dominant where, where both the parents are affected. If you see, again, you draw this three into three box. If they are affected, they're only going to carry one mutated allele because it is an autosomal dominant condition. So here you see three of them have the mutations. One has both mutations. So he might have a more severe disease. Uh, the other two have the mutations. They are also affected. One is not affected. So, so in autosomal dominant condition, there can be situations where both parents are affected, but the child is not affected. And if this offspring who's not affected, each offspring has a 25% chance of not being affected. So if there is a unaffected offspring, then the disease exits from the generation, from his generation. If he or she gets married to someone else, it is like uh, not having any history of that autosomal disease. He just doesn't have a mutation. While in autosomal recessive conditions, the person might not have the disease, but still be carried be carrying, the person might be carrying the mutation, right? So there are not going to be any skipped generations. If, if a generation is skipped, the disease will go. Each offspring has a 75% chance of being affected, which will not be affected by 
whether the previous child was affected or not. Now coming to autosomal recessive conditions, uh, look at this three into three box. It's a carrier parent. One allele is mutated, but the uh, parent is not going to be affected because only one allele is mutated. So here you will have, again, drawing the three into three box, you will see that 50%, each offspring has a 50% chance of inheriting mutated gene or being a carrier of the autosomal disease. Right. If, you know, I show you the same table and I tell you that both the parents are carriers. So if this parent is also a carrier, suppose this is the mutated allele, A dashed here, then this box also gets a mutated allele. So A, A dash. So you'll have each offspring, uh, rather this is A dash A and this box will inherit both the mutated allele. So this box will be A dash and A dash. So each offspring has a 25% chance of being affected if there are two carrier parents. This is, for example, in Thal minor. Whenever you uh, do electrophoresis in your antenatal patients and say she comes out to be Thal minor, then you are supposed to test the husband for thalassemia, for HB electrophoresis for thalassemia mutations. Because if the husband is also Thal minor, wife is also Thal minor, then you have to give a genetic counseling that each offspring has a 25% chance of being thal major where, you know, you might use prenatal or fetal implantation genetic testing. So that is the, uh, this is the reason why uh, that's important. Why for every thal minor patient, for every thal minor female, you have to test the male partner for uh, the mutation. Right, because if both are carriers, there's a 25% chance that each offspring can be affected. Right, so this is what I was talking about. 50% chance of being a carrier. Each offspring has a 50% chance of being carrier. 25% chance of being affected. Now, if one parent is, uh, we are talking about inheritance of autosomal recessive conditions where one parent is affected. If one parent is affected, it means that this parent has both the mutated alleles. And if the other parent is not affected, not a carrier, then none of the offsprings will inherit the disease, but all of the offsprings will inherit the mutation. So all of them will be carriers, as you can see in the box. So it is very easy to find out the inheritance if you just draw this box in the rough area of your question paper or whatever area you're given. So you just draw this box. They've told you that this um, disease, uh, the mother has this disease. You know this disease is autosomal recessive. And uh, thus you can form the genotype that this is going to be A dash A. And the father is unaffected. Father is not a carrier. So the father's genotype is AA. And then you can derive how many children. Uh, what is the percentage of each child being affected or being a carrier? Right. So this these boxes are very important. They, they are simple to draw. So A dash A dash because both of the alleles are going to be mutated. And then uh, the first box, you take this and this, and you have a carrier offspring. Second box, you take this normal allele and abnormal allele, and you have a uh, carrier offspring. So similarly, all the offsprings will have one uh, non-mutated allele from the normal parent and one mutated allele from the affected parent. Affected because it is a recessive condition. So affected parent will have both the mutated alleles, right? So here, 100% chance of being a carrier. Whether the previous child is a carrier or not, it doesn't depend on that. Now, if both parents are affected with an autosomal recessive condition, then there's a 100% chance that all the children will be affected. So if a thal major marries a thal major and they have children, then all the children are going to be thal majors, which is unlikely. But nowadays with the treatment, all the offsprings will be affected. Now coming to X-linked recessive conditions. X-linked recessive conditions, again, let's not read that. Let's first make the table. So the mother is a carrier. Father cannot be a carrier of X-linked recessive or X-linked dominant conditions because father only has one X chromosome. So here the mother is a carrier of an X-linked recessive condition. Uh, now you draw this inheritance pattern. Uh, first box, you have normal Xs from both. Second box, you have X and Y. So, uh, and the third box, you have X dash, the mutated allele from mother and normal allele from the father. So you can see that XX and XX are female, 50% female, 50% male, out of which in the females, 50% chance of being a carrier and in the males, 50% chance of being affected. 
right that is how it is in x linked recessive conditions it's not uh, necessary for you to remember if you can make this kind of table if you can derive the genotype of the parents from the question so you need to know two things whether the disease is x linked recessive dominant autosomal dominant recessive what is the inheritance pattern of the disease and secondly from the uh, pointers given in the question you have to identify the genotype of the parent if you know these two conditions you can get the genotype like if it is an autosomal dominant condition and they are saying father is affected then you know the allele is a a dash because it is an autosomal dominant condition if it is an autosomal recessive condition and they would say the father is affected you would write a dash and a dash because for a recessive condition to have the disease both the alleles have to be mutated so this is how you find out the genotype and then you put it in this box and you uh, derive the answer right so here in this question mother is a carrier of an x linked recessive disease x linked recessive because you know the disease uh, you know the list of uh, diseases and you know that this is an x linked recessive disease so if they say carrier this is the genotype if they say unaffected non carrier father then this is the genotype and that's how we derive that 50% of the males are carriers and 50% of the females are sorry 50% of the females are carriers and 50% of males are affected now since males only need one mutation to be affected males are more commonly affected only in x linked recessive conditions this is not true for x linked dominant condition so x linked recessive conditions if the father is a carrier father is generally not a carrier it's not correct to put it this way it's i haven't i have written here unaffected father i forgot to write this change this this is affected father and normal mother uh that's a major mistake which you have to you know ignore here uh, don't look at these points just look at the genotype here x dash y means the father is affected and x x means the mother is not affected not a carrier so if a father is a carrier all the girls carry out the disease or if a father is affected by x linked recessive condition none of the children will be affected but all the girls will be carriers so there's no 50% chance here there's a 100% chance that all the females will be carriers because all the females will become a female only when they inherit x chromosome from the father that is only when they become a female if they inherited inherit the y chromosome they become male so if they become females from this father then they're going to be carriers of the disease they'll not have the disease but they will pass it on pass it on to the next generation where females will be carriers and males will be affected when mother is affected anyways so this is suppose it's an excelling recessive condition whether where the mother is affected so both the alleles are mutated in this case both the alleles are mutated it means that all the males will have the disease and all the females will be carriers because both the mutated alleles are present right you just have to draw this box x dash x carrier female x dash x carrier female x dash y affected male x dash y affected male uh, though it is a recessive condition males will always express the disease because they have only one x chromosome right now it so many combinations you've seen it is difficult to memorize so you have to know to draw these tables in the exam x linked dominant condition when the mother is affected what is uh, the situation like so if the mother is affected it is an x linked dominant condition you know that it is an x linked dominant condition and they have given in the exam uh, in the question that mother is affected so this means it is x x dashed because it is a dominant condition so you should be able to derive all that and the father is unaffected so no mutations here so if the mother is affected uh, 50% of the females are going to be affected because they will inherit inherit one allele so i drew this box and i find out that out of two females one is affected which means each female has a 50% chance of being affected and each male has a 50% chance of being affected now this is not the right way to put again i'm repeating 50% affected males is not the right way to put it you put it each male as each male has 50% chance of being affected each female has 50% chance of being affected that this is an x linked condition which in uh, you know expresses similarly in males and females uh, because it is a dominant condition that's why it is not more common in uh, males it is uh, 
common in both it it will have a similar uh, prevalence in both males and females if father is affected all daughters will be affected because it is a dominant condition and a daughter becomes a daughter only when she takes x chromosome from the father so father's x chromosome is mutated it is an autosomal dominant condition all the daughters will be affected so dominant conditions you don't have carrier states and in dominant conditions 50% of the individuals are affected so whether it is an autosomal dominant condition or x linked dominant condition the inheritance pattern doesn't change much right y linked condition when the father is affected all the boys will be affected none of the babies will be none of the females will be affected right and y linked conditions are not dominant or recessive because there is just one y so if he has the mutation he will have the disease y linked diseases are uh, azoospermia uh, you know you would have those az azf azoospermia factor deletions which will lead to azoospermia so or there are, there is hypertrichosis you don't get those questions you get questions on azf you get questions on uh, y chromosome micro deletions but not on inheritance patterns definitely so and of, of course if it's a y linked condition the mother is going to be unaffected in every case scenario and every case scenario if the father has the disease he will have the mutation so mutation is there disease is there so all the males will be affected and none of the females will be affected so this is a simple inheritance pattern of violent conditions that's why you don't get these questions so for all of these answers you need to know the inheritance patterns of that particular question uh, which is given in your exam like for our question it is duchenne muscle dystrophy so you need to know now when we look at the question i'll tell you if you don't know if you don't remember then how to point out what is the inheritance it is going to have one of those inheritance patterns the disease in your question is not going to be violent condition if it is an inherited uh, inheritance based question uh, it has to be one of the other four which can be derived and then when you can get the answer so from all that discussion a few points to remember if the question mentions carrier the father is a carrier or mother is a carrier it is some kind of a recessive disease it can be an autosomal recessive disease or it can be an x linked recessive disease right if they say affected and one is carrier again you know that this is a recessive condition because the word carrier is there it is a recessive condition if the word, word carrier is not there if they say the father is affected mother is not affected then it can be autosomal dominant or recessive but if carrier is there it is definitely autosomal recessive if in the options male and female offsprings have different difference of inheritances then it is x or y linked again y linked is not uh, going to be asked so it is going to be x linked so if carrier is stated and male and female offsprings have different inheritances then you know that it is an x linked recessive condition uh, another point to remember if they say grandfather was affected father was not affected but the mother gets affected this means it's a recessive condition only recessive conditions will skip generations if a dominant condition skips generation that is is not seen in the generation then it will skip the whole pedigree chart only it will not be there in the subsequent generation so dominant doesn't skip generation it exists but autosomal recessive conditions or excelling recessive conditions they tend to remain in the pedigree the in the carrier state and then they express after a few generations or in each alternate generations and there is a situation where both parents are affected but the child is not affected now quickly if i ask you both parents are affected and child is not affected whether this condition is autosomal dominant or recessive now you should know that this is autosomal going to be autosomal dominant only because if both parents are affected for an autosomal recessive disease both the allele should be mutated so you have a box of a dash a dash and a dash a dash so all the uh alleles are mutated and in that case all the babies will be affected so autosomal recessive condition if both parents are affected there's 100% chance that all the babies will be affected but in autosomal dominant condition if you remember to express an autosomal dominant disease only one mutation is required so 25% of there's a 25% chance that each fetus is not each offspring is not going to be affected so both parents affected child not affected it is sure sure a dominant condition in if there is a situation where both parents are affected and a child is not affected then it is an autosomal dominant disease only it is a dominant disease only now uh, dominant doesn't skip generations is what i am telling here that if this aa this a this is the only child uh, the first child was born and he didn't have the disease because there was a 25% chance that the child is not going to have the disease so in that case 
uh, this person, this individual is not going to pass it on to anyone else because he simply doesn't have the mutation, he or she. Right. Now, about recessive conditions. Recessive conditions may skip generations. Unaffected parents may have an affected child. In dominant, both affected childs, both affected parents may have one uh, or, you know, many unaffected children or can have affected children also. But it is the other way around in recessive disease. Both parents are unaffected, like thalmina, thalmina. They didn't know they have any kind of thalassemia and the child gets affected. So both parents are unaffected and the child can be affected. Both parents are unaff unaffected, child is affected, it is an autosomal recessive condition. Both parents affected, child not affected, it is an autosomal dominant condition. So these certain points you have to remember. Uh, this is what carrier parent, unaffected child. Uh, this I think is about, uh, forget this chart, it is, I haven't labeled it properly. This is an affected parent. If one parent is affected, all the babies are going to be carriers. Now, uh, another small point about X-linked diseases is fathers will transfer X-linked diseases only to daughters, whereas mothers will transfer it to her daughters and her sons as well. The sons will have the disease. Mothers can transfer X-linked disease to both uh, daughters and sons. All the sons will have the disease and half of the girls will be carriers. Now, if you don't remember these, if you draw the charts, you will simply remember. Now, I think we can come back to the question. Now, look at this question. Like me, uh, it, you must also find sometimes difficult to remember what is the inheritance patterns of a pattern of Duchenne's muscle dystrophy. So, here you see they have written carrier. Carrier means it is not dominant. It is a recessive condition. And then they have said female is a carrier. So, Y-linked is out dominant is out. So it, it is either X-linked recessive or autosomal recessive. Then when you look at the options, so this is the chart I was saying, it, it is either X-linked or autosomal dominant uh, recessive here. So you know that it is a recessive condition. It is not a Y-linked condition. So your differentials are two, autosomal recessive or X-linked recessive. If it is an autosomal recessive, the inheritance pattern will not be based on sex of the baby. Whereas if it, if it is X-linked recessive, the inheritance pattern will be based on that. So when you read the question, the you, you prefixed on the thought that I don't remember what is the inheritance pattern of Duchenne's muscle dystrophy. But if you give one uh, 30 seconds extra, you see carrier. Carrier means recessive. So write it on the side. It is a recessive condition. And then you see the options, females and males. You say it is X-linked. Now you know that it is an X-linked recessive condition. Now I can derive. It is an X-linked recessive condition female as the carrier, which means in the first row, I will write X, X dashed. And male partner is not affected, is not a carrier. In the first column, I will write X and Y. And then I will draw the rest of the four boxes. So yeah, I'll have X, 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 X here. X. I'll go back to the box for you to make it easier. The autosomal recessive Right, I think this is the box. X-linked recessive. Yeah, this is the box. So this is your question. The mother is a carrier, father is unaffected. So you draw this box quickly because you have derived that Duchenne's muscle dystrophy is an X-linked recessive condition looking at the question and the options. And then you draw this box, X, X and X dash and X and Y. And then you know, you will have 50% chance of a female being a carrier, 50% chance of a male being affected. Right, 50% chance of male being not affected because there are two X chromosomes in the female and female will transfer both her X chromosomes to all her offspring, one to one male. And in uh, so she's going to give only one X chromosome to the offspring, you know. So if she's going to give only one X chromosome, one of her X chromosomes are abnormal. So 50% of the children will be abnormal. In girls, they'll be carriers and, fem and in boys, they will be having the disease. So that's how you answer this question. Going back to the question quickly. Yes, so you have Duchenne's muscle dystrophy is an X-linked recessive condition. That is what you derived. Then you draw the you drew the chart and you came to know that the 50% that 50% of the females will be carriers and 50% of the males will be affected, and that is how you find the answer. So uh, don't you know be prefixed on the uh, notion that you don't remember what kind of inheritance the disease has. If you don't remember, 
uh, even if you don't remember what you do is come to the closest differentials if uh, just give it uh, a little time and draw all of those boxes it can be a wiling disease it has to be an excelling or autosomal dominant or recessive carrier state means it is recessive and then uh, if you you know if you have any differentials that uh, you can't tell whether it is autosomal recessive or excelling recessive draw both the boxes in the situations and then see which of the options fits so what i want from you now is that give me a few questions like these which were asked in previous years exams so you have come across and then we'll use this same formula on your question and we will see mm. how it works so this formula this knowledge will help you solve all such kinds of questions 